Hi, my name's Aria, and this year I'll be going to Cambridge to study engineering. And I sat the ESA October 2024, and I got these grades. Here are five crucial tips that I used to save time during my exam. For this question, if you tried solving this by multiplying it out and doing it the regular way, it would take you absolutely ages. But using difference of two squares, you can solve it in two lines and it takes about five seconds. So this is a really, really vital skill that you need to develop for the ESAT. And it comes up in a variety of questions, especially with algebra. So yeah, definitely make sure you have this in your repertoire because it comes up quite frequently. All right, so tip number two then. So this is representing the trigonometric functions in their shorthand forms. So for example, sine is S, cos is C, tan is T. And it seems a little bit strange at first, but once you get used to this method, it's actually a lot quicker to solve these types of equations because you end up just writing less. And since you do write less, it's much easier for your brain to spot mistakes in your working out. And this also works for the reciprocal functions. So cosecant, sec, cotangent, because you can just represent that as one over sine, one over cos, one over tan, and then just use these symbols. And I would really advise this method because it saved me a ton of time. I know it seems like you save seconds writing down each line, but that time really does add up and save you a lot of time at the end of the paper. This tip is definitely something I would say is worth using because it doesn't take that much time to get used to. And once you do get used to it, it's it just makes your working out that much neater, that much faster, and that much more easier to find mistakes. So yeah, this is definitely a tip I would use. Okay, moving on then is tip number three. And this is to master the process of elimination. It's unlikely you'll be able to answer every single question without the use of guessing. So for the questions that you do guess, it's worthwhile that you eliminate some possibilities to increase your odds of success. So as an example, take the MAT 2006 question. Now say you have absolutely no idea how to solve this question. How would you eliminate some possibilities to m increase the odds of your success? Well, if you look at D and if you look at B, if you say X is zero, it satisfies both the condition of B because it's between minus one and one and it's any value. So it also satisfies D. And if you say X is like two, then that satisfies C and that also satisfies D. So D can't be the correct answer because it satisfies two conditions as well. So you can safely eliminate it. So now your guess goes from a one in four chance to a one in three chance. Now, admittedly, that is a relatively simple elimination, but just keeping your eye out for some answers that contradict with other answers can lead you to eliminate guesses and increase your probability of success. So this is a really worthwhile skill to develop and also doesn't take that much time either. But keep in mind, this skill can only take you so far. Like it's much better to actually solve the question by itself, but just keeping an eye out for some answers that just aren't plausible and eliminating those options is a very valuable skill to develop and will definitely improve your score when it comes to the ESAT. Okay then, so tip number four is to understand the properties of even and odd functions. And as a quick little definition for what even and odd functions are, here is an even function. So here's a definition of an even function. So for example, something like the graph of x squared. And the way I remember what an even function is, is that it's basically a mirror that reflects whatever's on this side to this side. So a reflection in the y-axis. And an odd function is something like the graph of x cubed. And a really nice property or a trick with odd functions is that if you integrate from the same bound, so say a from negative a to a, then the value of the integral is just zero because the area over here is literally the same as the area over here. But the area here is negative and the area here is positive. So they just cancel each other out. And this is a really useful trick because you can basically solve integrals of odd functions in basically seconds. Okay, so for example, if I asked you to work out the integral of this function, you would probably insult my bloodline or worse. But maybe, just maybe, if you realize that this is an odd function and it's bound by the same bounds, you go, hang on a second, that's just zero. And you'd be correct. So this tip does come in handy sometimes. Okay, so the fifth and final tip is to get really quick with binomial expansion. This is a really common topic that comes up in both the ESAM math papers. And these types of questions can be really annoying to solve because they take so much effort and so many lines of working out. But luckily they're a really common type of question in the ESAT. So once you've solved some, you can understand the pattern and then solve the rest. And although these questions are kind of long, there are a couple of tips that can help you solve them faster. So as an example, this is a really common Engel binomial expansion question. But there's a really nice neat trick you can do with this question to solve it in seconds. If you notice that both of these brackets are raised to the same power of five, you can take that five out of the brackets and this allows you to manipulate the inside expression to something like this. 
But if you read the question again, it asks you to work out the coefficient of an x cubed term. But here, it's an x squared term. So it can only give you coefficients of x to the 0, x squared, x to the 4, and so on. Never an x cubed term. So the coefficient of the x cubed term and any odd term in this question is just 0. So that's how you solve this. A final mention I want to add is that if you want to actually learn how to use these tips in your exam, you have to implement these tips alongside timed past paper revision. Otherwise, your brain just won't learn how to implement these tips. If you don't use past papers, your brain won't know how to absorb the knowledge you gain from these tips to actually implement them in practice. So make sure you spam as many past papers as possible so your brain can cement how to implement these tips into your memory. Anyways, I hope using these tips will make you faster and improve your scores on the ESAT or Tamua. If you found any of these tips useful, I'd appreciate if you liked the video and subscribe so you don't miss out the next set of tips I give out. But other than that, good luck and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.